A beautiful Sunday morning welcomes us to the OCBC Aquatic Center. It is day two for the City Para Swimming World Series Singapore leg, leg five of nine that will take place throughout this season. We start in Australia, we'll end in Athens and Singapore very much in the middle ground. I'm Des Cork alongside Teresa Go, a Paralympian a bronze medalist for Singapore in Brazil in 2016. She'll be the expert uh, throughout today's competition. Day two, it's the heats this morning for five events. We've got 10 Singaporeans swimming in 11 uh, separate uh, events, uh, 16 races in total, and a chance to save Zara Vargas Blanco and Carlos Zarate can add to their two gold medals or make, make preparations to add to their two gold medals as they are both swimming today. Plenty to look forward to, Teresa. Definitely. Good morning, everybody. I'm really excited for today because it's my favourite event. 100 meters breaststroke today and uh, uh, I have really fond memories of this event. <laughs> we will be having the heats, of course you've got to uh, familiar memories of this, we will be having the heats. Uh, they will be the third event and fourth event, the women's heat uh, in the middle of this morning's uh, heat. As I say, 16 uh, races, that means there's, there's heats for five separate events. Um, and, but the Singaporean interest, we, we had a world record, of course, yesterday. We can't expect an, another big showing like that today, can we? It's, it's going to be hard to follow yesterday's uh, incredible performance. Um, but we'll always, I know Singapore will do our best and uh, we will see what, what today brings. <laughs> These are the five events that we will be covering. The women's 400 freestyle heats, the men's 400 freestyle, women's 50 backstroke, women's 100 breaststroke, as Teresa is looking forward uh, to particularly to see, followed by the men's 100 breaststroke. The end of session around about 10.30 this morning. Finals at 5.30 tonight. Now the officials being introduced onto the, um, uh, onto the pool area. The Star Wars theme, I do love that. It really gets the, the mood going, the juices flowing early on on this Sunday morning. So important that the officials get the recognition from us, the commentators, and also from uh, uh, the, the swimmers themselves. Definitely. We would not be able to run this amazing event without any of the officials. They are professional. They are doing such a great job. If you are in Singapore, there are seats available for today and tomorrow. $10 on Cystic if you're in Singapore. If you're coming from abroad, then you better book your flights as well then. But uh, this is a, an international quality series. Uh, para swimming has taken um, a hold in people's imagination. It's treated a lot more seriously than it was well, certainly when you started out, Teresa. And the fact that we've got nine World Series and uh, World Championship going on this year, ahead of an Olympic year next year, it's, it's all looking good for para swimming at the moment. It's, it's, it's really amazing. I, I think I love how I've seen the sport grow. And uh, you're right, like nine World Series in, in a year, I never got to experience that. <laughs> So, I mean, it just shows just how much the sport has grown, not just in Singapore, but globally as well. And it's also in the national consciousness as well. I, I can't remember too many occasions when all nine series or many series have been televised exclusively on their own. Definitely. I, I think the real big change for us, or for me, I felt, was when we hosted the us and Power Games in 2015. It was the first time we swam in front of a home crowd. First time we hosted an, a global international swimming event for disability sports and uh, life changing, really. Life changing. Absolutely. Great for the sport as well. Also, recognition for the athletes. And the women's 400 meter freestyle will be the first for us to go. Uh, 10 athletes involved in this. No Singaporean um, involvement on this, but the New Zealand pairing of Gabriella Smith and Lily Fox Mason, they were both. Um, oh, sorry, there is uh, Tong Jing Swan. I can't read. Tong Jing Swan is going to be involved. She's down in lane number eight. An S10 competitor, qualification time of 7.15.90. Are we expecting Tong perhaps to um, get through to the final? Only two will be eliminated before tonight's final. We have some uh, high, high ranking swimmers in this heat. Uh, Wang Xingyi in lane three is third in the world actually for this event. Also, we get a chance to see Sarah Vargas Blanco once again, the Colombian who won two gold medals on day one. Uh, the Colombians have put a very strong team together. They won four of the gold medals on offer yesterday. Looking really strong, all of them. It's going to be a great second day. Everybody's a little bit warmed up, I, th I hope. Jing Swan will be in lane eight, which is one up from the bottom. One up from the bottom. There she is, just poised. 
white swimming cap. A long hold. Safely, but she's just being left a couple of meters behind the early leader is Gabriella Smith. Women's 400 meter freestyle, it's very important to get off to a decent start but not to burn all your energy in the first 50 or 100 meters. 400, basically the longest uh, for many of, the, uh, of us in the Paris swimming uh, scene. 400 meters is eight long laps. I cannot remember the last time I swam 400 meters. Gabrielle Smith turns in 38.85. Her compatriot, Lily Fox Mason, 34.12. Sarah Vargas Blanco, she's in P3 at the moment. Reminder, this is the heat. Eight out of these ten will qualify. Also a reminder for those who weren't watching yesterday or aren't familiar with Para Games, it's not so much whether or not you touch the wall first at the end of the race, it's the points that you accumulate based upon your time allied to the disability level that you are allocated by the inspection teams. But it's New Zealand through 100 metres. They are kind of looking after each other. Gabriel Smith in lane four and Lily Fox Mason in lane five, turning at 110.78. Anything inside five minutes is pretty special. Turning now in lane eight is Tong Jing Swan. 132.30. She's in P7 at the moment. But is uh, swimming pretty well. Again, we'll focus very much on the black caps of the Kiwis. And they are going stroke for stroke and looking very comfortable, Teresa Go. Everyone's looking really smooth in the water. Good body positions. And Turn. you note that, that uh, one swimmer didn't show up for the heat, so one swimmer will be eliminated for the finals today. That's uh, Chikako Ono from Japan, who was a, a no-show in lane three. And that, at the moment, is good news for Tong Jing Swan, because Jing Swan is currently in eighth place. And Jing Swan will turn now. She's around about 40 metres shy of the race leaders the two Kazakhs in lane zero and lane one Alina Sinelikova and Natalia Zvakintseva they at the moment are the ones who are closest to Jing Swan still the New Zealand girls are leading the way can you work in pairs, Teresa, when you're like that, certainly when it's your compatriot? Uh, are you aware of who's close to you and you're kind of making sure that your stroke rhythm is similar? Sometimes. I think if you know the person, surely there's some way to strategize beforehand, but it's really hard if it's a, a competitor you don't know, because you then have to depend on somebody else's pace for your own. But these two, Gabriella Smith, who's leading the way, and Lily Fox Mason, they are... Uh, Certainly know each other, but it's a two and a half second differential. You can just see the speed pick up a little bit as they go through the 400 meters. Through 250, coming up to 300 meters. In the meantime, Sarah Vargas Blanco is just turning now. And there's about a 45-meter difference between P1 and P3. That's a, a really impressive swim by the New Zealand swimmers, Gabriella Smith. They are both S10 athletes. And really powering away now is Gabrielle Smith. This is a, a really powerful stroke and a really strong swim. Considering she's an S6 swimmer compared to the first two who are S10s, this is a really, really good swim for her. Just 17 years of age as well, Gabrielle. Lots of energy. <laughs> <laughs> that will disappear over time. <laughs> Don't tell her yet. But she will turn at 3.50, well clear of the rest. There is a real race, I can tell you, for P8, where Tong Jing Swan is currently just holding on in P8. She's just ahead of Zvaventova. 
But let's focus now on the woman who's going to touch home first. And she'll be, oh, she'll be good 15 metres clear of her nearest rival. And this is a very, very good swim coming in from Gabrielle Fox of New Zealand. Points-wise, though, you can see on the scoreboard that the points are calculated at 752. It means she's first at the moment. That doesn't necessarily mean she will be first at the end because Gabrielle and Lily Fox are S10 athletes. Sarah Vargas is in third place at the moment. She has turned in a time of 5.10.90, and she's still got uh, around about 30 metres to swim. And is under pressure from Huizhou, from China. Right then, Sarah is on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, Let's see what the point calculation will be for her. Her time, 5.45 at the moment. She's not going to be far away, is she? Sarah Vargas straining. Well, that's going to be good enough for P2. 729 points for Sarah Vargas. Gosh, she's a doughty competitor, isn't she? She seems to be unstoppable. <laughs> so much energy, in her, and I think she's just raring to go for more. OK. I think this is looking like it's not good news for Singapore. Tong Jin Swan is trailing in in ninth place at the moment, has just been overtaken by Svarginsva. Over on the far side, it will be very tight at the touch. Svarginsva has just touched now, which means I think that's. Oh, Jin Swan is in there. Where's Normal? Normal is still swimming. So Nummel, how many points? So Jing Swan, at the moment, 48 points. is eight out of eight, but there is one athlete still out in the pool. Nomon Curl from Mongolia. She is just about to make her turn now. An S6 athlete. Now this will be a tough 50 meters for Nummel. We mentioned this several times yesterday in commentary, Teresa. It's a race against yourself as much as anything else. More than anything. I think because you just... It's so hard to hear or see anybody else from when you're swimming. It's really a race against yourself. She had no time coming into classification. She's now above 7.30. Still around about uh, 20 metres still to go. I think Jing Swan might be safe. Yeah, Jing Swan is safe by about 10 metres. She just made the finals, and I think she'll be really glad to know that making it to the w WPS finals is always a good thing. So a, a valiant effort by yeah, Mongolia's Karol yeah, Noma. And in early heats, the top eight are decided. Karol's oh, efforts just not enough to make her through to the final. A no show from uh, Chicago Ono. Oh and, like and that uh, means that one through eight will be qualifying for tonight's women's 400 meter freestyle final. Here are the highlights. It was all about the Kiwis, it was all about uh, Gabriella Smith in lane four and Lily Fox Mason in lane five. There was no doubt. They, were, they took the early lead, they were really consistent and, and smooth throughout the, their swims. Can definitely look forward to a repeat tonight. Gabriella Smith uh, accumulating 752 points. But interestingly, Sarah Vargas Blanco not too far behind in terms of the points differential. And we've seen that Sarah rises to the occasion. Confirmation. Or oh, disqualification for Zvangitseva. A no show for Chikako Ono. So, in the end, it's quite comfortable for Jing Swan. <laughs> what, what was I worried about? Seven. <laughs> <laughs> Men's 400 freestyle. Start list again 10 athletes in the water. Igor Bolotov, probably the one to look out for in lane number seven from Uzbekistan, fastest. Of all of them, though, is uh, Edwin Villanueva. 
Time of 5.54.35 to qualify. Classes S6 through to S14 in this. So again, look out for the guys on the outer part of the, uh, of the pool. A decent start for Bolotov. And Bolotov, who's an S13 racer. Nice long stroke from Igor. 26 years of age. Really big pulls and long, long pulls. Making sure not to rush his strokes. That looks a very efficient stroke for Igor Bolotov. Said do look out for him. He is the only S13 racer. Next to him, Himanshu Nandal. He's in the lane next to him. Himanshu is an S11 racer from India, but uh, again, he's kept his form through this first 100. And he is flying across that water, is Bolotov. Turns in one in one, one minute flat, 59.98. Good powerful strokes. And he looks very efficient. He looks like he's really comfortable. Keeping the pace as long as he can and then starting to increase the speed as he goes along. Behind them, I can tell you that Jaffrey Jikol has got himself into second place. Bolotov turns 133.45 through 150. That's very presentable. Slightly slower third leg. He was one minute flat through 100. So a 33 second uh, third 50. But he's powering through as we focus on. Igor Bolotov from Uzbekistan turning in second place is Jafri Jikov. A 157.68 through 150 for the Malaysian in lane number nine. The 400 really is a very mental race. You know, you have to remember how many, how many laps you've done. You have to remember your strategy in the race, how much you're supposed to give in each lap. When to transition the speed and when to power up well it looks like there's plenty of power there on Bolotov but the stroke rate has decreased significantly actually he turns 242.28 through 250 just going on the inside of him, very bottom of your screen. You can see Malaysia's uh, Jaffrey Jikol. He is in P2. Alongside him, you've got a Manchu Nandal from India, who's currently in P3. And also Reno Saputra from Indonesia. So there's a genuine race going on for who will touch second. But I don't think there's much doubt that Bolotov is going to take this quite comfortably. He's 317.52 through 300 metres. Right, now, ladies and gentlemen, just a disqualification announcement for event number 12. Still, <coughs> excuse me, Jaffley. One. One. Jaffley is holding on to P2. You just saw him go through, although Jaffley is under pressure from Indonesia's Reno Saputra. Reno Saputra seems to have uh, timed his race very, very nicely. Bolotov turns at 350. He's on his final 50. Everybody else has got at least 100 to go. And Bolotov has got the better of Edwin Villanueva in lane four. There's a bit of surprise. Villanueva is um, a reasonably fast qualifier. But here is going to be the man to touch first. He said to look out for Igor Bolotov, an S13 swimmer. And he gets 800 and 88 points does the Uzbek. 
Fine swim. We'll get confirmation on those points at the moment. It says 8.88. But the real race now is Saputra, who has turned into the lead. Lane six, Saputra. He's just coming back. There he is. There's the man in P2, Saputra. Just going out the bottom right of your screen. Sprinting back on his final lap. And he's certainly up the pace, Saputra. Lane six gets the touch now. And that is a good time. 5.27.89, anything inside 5.30 is very good. This is pretty good from Jaffrey Jickel. Jickel touches third, 214 points for Jaffrey Jickel. Himanshu touches 314 points, so Bolotov's 8.88 if confirmed. Looks to be pretty impressive. In fact, it looks to have wiped the floor with the rest of the field. The last man out in the pool is Villanueva from Philippines. And so Bolotov looked impressive. And you look at those uh, statistics. He certainly was impressive, Teresa. Just, just absolutely annihilated everybody. <laughs> Lucky 888. For the Uzbek. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, you made number 13 of men's 400 meter freestyle. Heat one of three. Heat one of three completed. Scorecard, the graphics for once letting us down. Sunday morning gremlins. We will need to confirm, there you go, that the <laughs> Uzbek score has been rounded down to 720. We were suspicious of the 888, so 888, not a lucky score. Still, still really impressive, above 700 points. Here's the highlights, and the highlights will all focus on lane number seven, Igor Bolotov. Impressive swim by Bolotov, Bolotov but we have to remember there's two more heats, and there's going to be even faster swims in these two heats. Yeah, 720, you suspect will be good enough for the final, but... How close to the front for Igor Bolotov? <laughs> Just awaiting confirmation because there was a gremlin in the, uh, in the graphics which are superbly working. And very important in the para games because the, the points total is what is really calculated. They're very bright and breezy for a Sunday morning, aren't they? <laughs> They're way too energetic. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we just wait confirmation. Here it comes. Or maybe it doesn't. Second heat of the men's 400 freestyle. About to get underway. Tursun Kujayev in lane three, and Ethan Ko from Malaysia in lane five. Probably the two to really look out for here. Ethan Ko has posted a time of 4.32. Keiki Saito inside of him in lane four. The fastest in the pool, and Saito it is who gets off to a very good start. He's up early into his stroke, but alongside him, Tursun Kujayev in the yellow cap has the early lead for Uzbekistan. No Singaporean interest in this heat, but Malaysian interest in lane three, Darwan Fryden. And also Ethan Koo, I mentioned, in lane number five, who will be turning in third place, Ethan Koo, in a very respectable time of 30.89. These four going stroke for stroke. Lane three, four, five, and six. As we expected, Turkan. Tursun Hujayev, Saito, Ethan Koo, and Min Swan from Chinese Taipei is the 
boy in the white cap who's just in fourth place, keeping close eye on everybody else. And it'll be Saito who turns first in 104.30, so it's a slower swim than the first, first heat. The 400 is a great example of how much a kick matters, you know? A turn and you could just edge your competitor out bit by bit. You can make you a number of seconds if you get it right, get it wrong, and you're left floundering. <laughs> Genko will turn first through 150. Interesting to compare the time. He's just a, a little bit short of the time set by Bolotov in the first heat. But Genko leads. Tursun Pujayev in P2. Ethan Ku in three in the yellow cap on the right hand side of Genko. But Genko is, is looking powerful. But he has a very fast stroke rate, and Tursun Pujayev alongside him. Nice and relaxed, long flowing strokes as they come through 200. And they'll turn through 200. Genko still has the lead, but by less than half a second from Tursun Kujayev. Nice comparison between the strokes there. Energy from Genko. Tursun Kujayev, nice and relaxed. Good battle for P1, 2.50 coming up. And the split time for this will be, again, just a little bit slower than the first leg. 2.48.15. Talk to me about the stroke differential, though, between Tursun Kujayev in the yellow and Genko in the black cap. I think, you know, we always want to be efficient and long in the water, but sometimes it is down to personal preference. How does the this, this stroke make you feel? You know, if this is what works for him, it works for him. <laughs> but Genko looks like he's working terrifically hard, and you wonder, as they come into the final 100, whether or not his energy will be sapped coming into the final. And Sersun Kunjaev flips through, but Genko has got himself a, a bit of a lead there. 3.22.79, it's a lead of one and a half seconds, and Ethan Koo's making a comeback on the inside lane to Genko as well. This is a good race, it's going to be a good finish as we have 75 meters still to race. And if you know you have it in you, you power it up early. The earlier you get faster, you know, you could leave your competitors all behind you. Oh, Saito Genko will turn, and Tursun Kujayev, rather than closing in on the Japanese, he's under pressure now from both Ethan Koo and the man in lane four, uh, Shi Min Swan. So Genko, as he laps the athlete in lane number eight, Yang Jurong. Genko is going to come through, and Tursun Kujayev has sunk. He has gone from P2 and challenging for P1, and he will touch in P4. But how many points is it? Genko will touch first. Ethan Ku. I think was just pipped to P2. Points 8-11 for Ethan Koo. He and Chinese Taipei's uh, Min Swan, 811 points. That's a terrific performance by the Malaysian. Right, athletes in the water, down in lane number two. That one, Friden from Malaysia. 394 points for Dawan. Four athletes still to complete their swims. In lane number nine, nearest the camera, that's Aditya Patpale. Patpale, as we approach the 5.30 mark. In general, it's a, a quicker heat. Patpale will get the touch. Now, how many points for Bafale? And the answer is... 101. So as the points finally work themselves out, one more athlete still to complete his swim, and that's uh, Yang Jurong from China. 
whose best time was 5.20.49 and he's way outside of that. He's beyond six minutes, but again, it's a valiant effort from all of the athletes and 400 metres is a punishing discipline. It is sometimes way too long. But a very, very different uh, strategy, you know, whenever you're swimming 400 compared to a 50. 400 is a different type of swimmer also. Uh, making their way through the pool, uh, the swimmers from event number 13, the men's 400 meter freestyle. So three, as they turned, three. it's the man in the yellow cap nearest us, who eventually would accumulate the most points, Ethan Koo from Malaysia. The race was won by Genki Saito from Japan. And he won it going away. Turkson Kujayev just fell away in the latter stages in the last 100 meters. That really, really competitive, good competitive swim by the S14 swimmers. 811 for Ethan Ku, 811 for Min Suan Shi, Saito 679, Muzafa 642. And you'd imagine those in the 600s will be qualifying for tonight's final. Three heats. And the third of those hits is coming up now, and there will be Singaporean interest in the form of Darren Chan over in lane number one, second lane up. S14 swimmer, we'll keep a close eye on him. Three Filipinos, two Japanese. And the Malaysian, Brian Lau, in lane six. Decent start from... Darren, over in lane number one. Currently, he's holding P3 at the moment. The, the man who's uh, burst into the lead is Brian Lau from Malaysia. Brian Lau with the, the red cap has really gone out at some pace for this first 50. And he is going to turn in a very rapid 29 seconds. You wonder if that might be just a tad too quick. <laughs> You certainly do. He really has gone out for it. But I tell you what, Darren Chan is following him. At the moment, Darren is in P2. He turned in 30-23. And go out quick and hold on for grim death. Is that is that the uh, strategy being adopted here? Sometimes that might be the plan. <laughs> but uh, Darren is looking really strong in the water, really smooth. And um, you can see that he's powering with his legs, you know. Uh, hopefully he can hold on to this. Brian Lau turns in P1, 102.94, slightly slower, 105.20 for Darren Chan. Third place is Ogiwara from Japan, 106.41. Darren is an S14 swimmer, Brian Lau also an S14 swimmer, so you could expect to see them at the front. Islam Aslanov, an S13 swimmer in lane number four. I must confess, we're expecting to see a little more from Islam. Maybe the 400 is just a, a little bit too, too much. Brian Lau will turn up 150 in a time of 138.88. The quickest heat of the three so far. Agiwara has got himself ahead of Darren Chan. And also joining the fray in lane number five is Uchu Tomita. Brian Lau continues to impress. He set a time of 4.38.29 as his entry time. And he's led from the get-go, a 29-second split first 50. As he's through 200 metres, Brian Lau is at 2.15.79. can Turn. see the S, uh, S11 swimmer getting tapped to let him know that he has turned in lane five. We had the discussion about the high technology using for the for the visually impaired swimmers. I was thinking it was something really sophisticated, a tennis ball on the end of a stick. Sometimes it could just be a stick. <laughs> <laughs> but Brian Lau, he doesn't need a stick at the moment. You can see the um, in lane five, just alongside him, to meet up. There is the touch for him but Brian Lau is turning there 252.40 this is impressive it's a five second advantage over Ogiwara in lane two Darren Chan has just turned now Darren's dropped down to P4 that fast start is beginning to impact on Darren 
think definitely something to work on when, when he returns to training is the pacing. Because he's also under pressure from Ernie Gawilan from Philippines as Brian Lau turns in first place. Split of 3.29.15. He'll be looking for something around about the 340 mark if he possibly can. Ogiwara and Tamita turn in two and three. Malaysia, Japan, Japan. Where is Darren Champ? Well, he's just turned now in P5. He's lost another place to Ernie Gawalan, but he's got a good kick off the wall as Darren Champ. In the 400 or even the 200, I, I imagine you want to continuously speed up. You know, you need to find it within yourself and pace. So well that you can come back even faster. 407 11, Brian Lau makes his turn. Looking for a 35 second split on this last 50. There or thereabouts to get himself close to 440, 445. Respectable time. He has swung faster, he has a, a 438 to his credit. But nonetheless, he is going to take this heat and he's going to. Earn himself a place in the final, but how many points will it be for Brian Lau? Those points, they drop very, very, very quickly. 733 points for Brian Lau. Possibly not enough to win the race. So there is the, the man who touched first. Man who touched second, 788 for Ogiwara. Here's the man who's got the points lead. 825 for Uchu Tumita. Finished third, but there's still some athletes out on the out in the pool. Darren Chan, he's finished 468 points, just outside five minutes. 507, Teresa. He went very, very quickly, did Darren? He definitely went out really quick, and I think maybe that may have, may have cost him. But uh, still close to his seated time, I think he will be pleased with that, even though he could do uh, more. Still out in the pool, Gary Bagino from Philippines. He's coming in now. He'll break the 600 barrier. He'll accumulate himself 590, uh, 613 points for Bagino. So although he finished 10, he'll get himself a, a reasonably high place. He gives himself a shot in the final. Overall, still pretty, pretty good heat. Got some really high points here. Some very high points. And tonight's final promises to be thoroughly absorbing. Brian Lau for Malaysia. Led from the very start, went out supremely quickly. Darren Chan tried to match him. Darren faded, whereas Ethan Koo didn't. Sorry, uh, Brian Lau didn't. Ethan was in the previous uh, heat. Just awaiting confirmation. Good support for the athletes. It gets quite noisy during the races. You, you say as a swimmer when you're in the pool you can't hear anything, obviously, but it's noisy in and around and echoes around this uh, wonderful arena. I mean, the swimmers can't usually hear very well in the water, but that doesn't change the fact that you need to scream when you're in the arena. It really adds to the atmosphere, makes um, everybody feel hyped up, you know. And we do hear it when we get out of the water, so... <laughs> so, Darren Chan, a P6, 472 points. He might just miss out on the final. Might get a B final, but Gino gets in P5. Brian Lau, despite winning the race, touching first... 733 points accumulated, only good enough for P4 overall. And these are the qualifiers. Well, the top eight will qualify for the final. Bolotov, who won the first heat, only just squeezes in. Genki Sato squeezes in for Japan with uh, 679 points. They are the eight finalists for tonight. As we move on to the men's 50-meter backstroke, heat number one, start list. Ten athletes, one length of the pool, so they'll start from the left-hand side, according to our commentary and camera positions. 
And we see a familiar face, Cameron Leslie. He is uh, currently ranked first in his classification for 50 backstroke. So we can, I guess, we can expect some high points from him. Classes S1 to S5. It's mainly S4 and S5 out waiting to get their starting orders. We won't usually see S1s in twos in uh, World Paris Series because they're, they're not, there's not many of them, but they will usually be the ones who start on their back in the water. I saw Vo there. He knew the cameras were on him there, did Vo, didn't he? <laughs> He'll be in lane six, Vo Tan Tung from Vietnam. Four Vietnamese athletes in this men's 50 backstroke for class S1 to S5. Fastest time in the pool. Lane number four, Ran Jing Song. Oh, it looked like there was a false start there. Indeed, a false start has been called. Just missed one of the swimmers. They're going to have to make it to the middle. Uh, well, completely unaware of what's going around him, Ran Jing Song. Well, they've missed him again. He's that quick. He's beating the guys on the sidelines. Got bad news for you. Jing Song, really bad news for you, old chap. Going to have to do it all again. You're laughing, Teresa. Go. You're you're wicked. <laughs> I'm laughing just because I, I imagine just how focused they are on getting to the other side. They, they just can't feel the rope below them. And you also saw that Lizzie Kerr from Malaysia. He finished the race as well, and <laughs> now they're being told they've got to go all the way back and start all over again. We do have a one start rule, so the swimmer that this did that false started will not get to swim. And I think it was Leslie Cameron, uh, Cameron Leslie. Have I got that right, lane two? That certainly, from the naked light, looked like uh, that was the problem. We've got a feel for the, the two swimmers, though, who completed the 50 meters, gave it their all, and now they've got to refocus all of their energies. Mentally, physically prepare again, knowing they have to do what they just finished. The compensation for them is that it's only 10 athletes, eight will go through, one's been, if uh, he is going to be disqualified. And one didn't show up. And one no show, so. They might make it all, <laughs> all make it true. I think it might have been uh, heat, uh, lane three, actually. Tanaka? With the yes, clock. maybe, maybe. So just a, a slight delay in proceedings. Wheelchairs being brought round to help the athletes. Get, the, get them to push them back as slowly as possible. Yes, let me, let me breathe. The Malaysian Colours protect on the uh, wheelchair for Lee Zika. So the first full start, and we're, what, we're into the second full day of events. That's pretty impressive. That's pretty good discipline bad. from the athletes. At least it was on the first day. <laughs> You're watching the City Para Swimming World Series from Singapore. Back at, in Singapore for the first time since 2019, already booked into the calendars for next year. Around about the same weekend in May. The Para Series will be coming back. There's Koko alongside Teresa Go. The Paralympian bronze medalist in 2016, providing the analysis and the expertise on what's been going on today.
but how much will that 50 have taken out of them or are they so used to lap after lap after lap in terms of training they would i guess they would hope that training has helped <laughs> uh, but they will definitely take a lot out of them it was a basically a, a sprint a full-on sprint to the end and yeah, they will they will be feeling it when they start again watching song who it was so quick he actually beat the guys running to drop the tapes. They could not get there to drop the ropes in fast enough. <laughs> and you laughed, Teresa Go. It's there for everyone to, to hear. Now, of course, in our competition, uh, this is next three days from yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We actually welcome to go 174 elite parents with us from 21 countries. And amongst them, 15 of our home boys and girls will be competing. Okay. A little bit of a, a respite. He, athletes will be allowed to settle themselves. The, the guard is on duty, just in case. You always imagine the irony of being a lifeguard in a World Para Series or World Event, a <laughs> swimming event. But that's not to say it doesn't happen. Nope. You know, crimes happen. Paris thought it does happen, but uh, safety of the athletes absolutely fundamental. Coaches uh, or the assistants just getting the, the previous swimmers kept up and ready to swim again. Well, we can see in lane four, Ranjing Song. Hinata also there in lane five. And there is Lee Zika. The Malaysian contingent down over the causeway for this weekend's activities and the weekend's activities run through till tomorrow as well. Heats from 9 o'clock in the morning, then the finals from 5.30 to come down and support not only the local athletes but the athletes who've come from 20 other countries to Singapore. The World Series moves on to Berlin in Germany next, then on to Limoges in France, and then there's a bit of a break for the Para, World, Para Swimming World Championships in Manchester, England, before the final two rounds of this season. We have a couple of Team Singapore athletes heading to Berlin too after this. Okay, take two. Lane number four looks empty. Indeed, Jing Song is not part of this race. And now we are properly underway. 50 meters backstroke. And look at the work there going on through uh, KD Hinata. Hinata is just being edged on the inside by Igor Tanaka. The two Japanese, one and two. Tanaka on the left has just got himself half a body length in front. Tanaka, an S5 athlete, so is Hinata. And it'll be Tanaka who will touch the wall first. It's close though. Tanaka will accumulate a very healthy 841 points. Good enough for P1, but look at that inside of him. Cameron Leslie from New Zealand, 953 points. You said to watch out for Cameron. And you've been proven once again, Teresa Go, to be dead right. That's what you would expect from the first ranked backstroke swimmer in his class. Hoa Dan from Vietnam. He's still in the water at the moment, over on the far side. That is Marco Tinamisan from the Philippines on the near side. Dan touches imminently and does accumulate five points. And Marco Tina Massan, he's going to be touching uh, the last one. Ranjing Song was disqualified from lane number four. As we see the hard work there from Marco Tina Massan. And he will, will he accumulate points? The answer is one. You're in the positive. At least that's a point. The men's 50 meter backstroke. Ladies and gentlemen, we're moving to event number 16, which is the women's 
So one swimmer gets eliminated from this heat and the rest of them go through. So the one to be eliminated will be Marco Tinamisan. Not by much though, just four points. He was maybe one second out of a, a place in tonight's final, but Cameron Leslie will be the man in touch. There he is, Cameron Leslie, 953 points. That's very impressive. Tanaka and Hinata, both very good. Yes, five athletes. Vo and Nguyen from Vietnam and also Ha completing the top six. Right then, women's 100 breaststroke. Four heats. Ten athletes in this first heat. Good to look out for. You're the genuine expert in this. Uh, I will have my eyes definitely on some of the lower classification swimmers. Yu Liu from China in lane nine. An SB4. Also... Zhou Yanfei in lane four, an SB4 swimmer. Alongside those were, them. Those are my classifications. <laughs> so it'll be really nice to see what timings they post, which I will not be able to reach now. <laughs> Has the sport come on that much in terms of times? I think so. I think the last I've seen, there have been a lot of improvements in timing uh, among, I mean, across all the classifications. And it just speaks of uh, how, how much the swimmers have progressed. The race is likely to be a battle between Kalilova in lane seven from Uzbekistan, Sinel Nikova in lane three from Kazakhstan, and Lao Chi Yi from Hong Kong. They are the S14 and S13 competitors. Take your marks. Two lengths of the pool. Uh, and it's a decent start from Sinel Nikova. But an even better start from lane seven, Kalilova from Uzbekistan. She's S14, Naterine. Inside of her. Sorry, uh, Alifa, inside of her. An S9, SB9 competitor. But Kalilova, that's a, a very, very strong first 45. And it will be Kalilova from Uzbekistan, who turns first at time, 38-31. Bring up the rear in lane four is Zhao Yanfei, but we'll keep a close eye on Zhao, and also on uh, Yu Yu in lane number nine. You can definitely see the difference in the swimmers with, uh, with uh, who have the power to kick and those that don't. You know, the, the swimmers who can kick they can go a bit higher, they can push a bit further forward, you know, that's not something that the swimmers who can't kick can do. So they have to compensate by a longer stroke, uh, making sure they don't go up too high. Kalilova will touch and accumulate over 800 points, 7.99. So that's a, a good target to aim for. In lane number one, 639 points for Lao Chiu Yi. Sinal Nikova, 568 points. She touches in P3. 925 points, though, for the woman in P4. That is uh, Ung Chuck Yang from Hong Kong, an SB6 swimmer, posting a time of 137.98. That's a really, really high point. There are some seriously high points. Now then, our focus will look on the three women still left in the pool. But I don't think any of them has the points countdown. I don't think any of these uh, SB4 swimmers are going to be able to get themselves close to the time that they need to. Zhao Yangfei. Short yeah, strokes. Yeah, shorter strokes. Uh... You can't waste the time getting high, higher up on the water and you might risk going too deep in the water. So this, the swimmers usually have to keep on the surface quite closely. So Zhao Yanfei 
will finish now in a time of 254.50, which is outside her best by some 20 seconds. And Yu Yu comes through. Let's accumulate some points. Last couple of strokes for Yu. And she indeed contributes 17 points. So the first of the heats of the women's 100 breaststroke. And it was always going to be between the S uh, SP14 and SP13 swimmers. And Kalilova showed really good style. And that is a, a very, very good performance from Kalilova. 7.99 points. But the woman we really need to look for was the woman in Pete, um, in lane number two. Ung Chuk Yan from Hong Kong. Posting a really, really high points. 925. 9.25 points. That definitely will be a place in the final. City Alifa, or Alfia, sorry, from Indonesia in P4. She'll be sweating on a place in the final. As will Alina Sinalnikova from Uzbekistan. He too, Singaporean interest. Robbie Yo in lane zero, extreme far side of the pool. In the easy to spot white cap and turquoise. Take your marks. The 100 breaststroke is a really technical race. You know, when I was swimming it, there's always um, a strategy for each part of the, the race, there's a 15 meters strategy, 25 meters, uh, what to do when you reach the wall and how do you finish quick and fast. Gabriella Smith has had a good morning, she was impressive in uh, earlier heats, now in this uh, 100 breaststroke. She is leading the way under pressure from Kanan Fukuda from Japan, but it'll be Smith to turn first for New Zealand. Smith an SB9 category. Good push off the wall for Gabriela Smith, Fukoda in second, and Natarine showing her versatility, the 17-year-old tie in P3. The split time for Smith when she turned 39.8. And Smith, if you're looking at inside uh, a one. 18, which may well be her target. She's got 15 meters to go. Slowing the stroke time just a little bit. This is going to be a high score for Gabrielle Smith. And Gabriella Smith, can she keep it in the 900s? The answer is no. It's an 8.82 for Gabriella Smith. It's an 8.66 for Kanan Fukuda. Smith still holds on. Over on the far side, Robbie Yo, an SB14 swimmer. So plenty to learn. We're focused here on the near side of Zhang Li and uh, Dan Huang, both the Chinese athletes. Over on the far side, Robbie Yo is just about to touch the wall. And Robbie Yo will finish and accumulate 132 points there for Robbie. A time just outside two minutes. I think you always uh, miss, or you always underestimate how much back you need for a back stroke, for a breast stroke. You know, you need that, that back support to be able to get out of water higher. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Event number 16, the women's 100 meter breast stroke. This was heat two of four. Some good swims there, particularly from Gabriella Smith. She's in the black in lane four. Led at the halfway point and would go through and comfortably break the tape at 122.73. Are the swimmers from event number 16, the yeah. 100 meter Can always do better. <laughs> That's what that said for us, didn't it? It's always a good mindset. I can always do better. You want to see much, some faster swims in this heat? Confirmation of the Heat 2 result, Gabrielle Smith, 882.800 for Fukuda, almost certainly in the final. Jiang from China, 683. Natarine, again competitive, 669. It's 
Going to be competitive, right, into heat number three. Schlandorf from Brazil, an SB4 competitor on the extreme far side and for Singapore. And Singapore, Jasleen Tan. Somebody approaching my age here, 56, I think. 56 years young, Susanna. Heat three of the 100 meter breaststroke. And that's a, a good start there from Chan Wilam. Eira Kinoshita, who was uh, strong yesterday as well. She's going alongside. And this looks, as we approach the um, Final 15 metres of the first 50. This looks a very, very quick, a quick heat. Looks like a great heat. I think they all, they all look really strong and look like rockets. It's very close. Turning first will be Chan. Kinoshita, less than half a second behind. And barely a second behind them is Tungyi An. Tidana Schnadov is, at this moment, Struggling just to reach the 50-meter mark. So the Brazilian will be working her hardest, but our focus will be on the race here, and this is a good race. Chan Wei Lam has been able to hold on to that lead despite the pressure from Kinoshita. Two SB14 athletes, and Hong Kong have the lead here. Chan Wei Lam, and she's just pulling away in the last 10 meters or so, and Chan will touch in a time of 119.86 for 938 points for Chan. Fast, fast time. Very quick time. And I think uh, you just see how breaststroke is all about timing, you know. You've got to know when to get out of the water, when to get into the water. Make sure you're as streamlined as possible, all within that one stroke. Heat number three, and Jasleen Tan is just touching home now. She's finished seventh, 391 points for Jasleen Tan, 144-21 for Jasleen. In lane eight, two athletes still out in the water. Well, one has finished there, is our race winner. And that's uh, an impressive time, got to say, 119.86. Uh, Susanna, slowly but surely makes her way to the end of the first 50 meters. In the breaststroke, they always have to make sure you touch with both hands, because if you touch with one hand, you can get disqualified. 56 years young, Susanna Schlondorf makes her way back down the pool. This is City Para Swimming World Series. Susanna, I think one of these athletes who's just so thrilled to be a competitor, Teresa. She knows she's not going to win, but she's going to put her best out. She's going to say to the world, this is as good as I've got. And you're going to watch me have a real go at this. You're all going to watch me. Susanna has been in the scene for many, many years. You know, she also recently won a Tokyo Relay silver medal in, uh, in 2021. Um, but she, you know, the other day I mentioned she's also uh, used to be a, a, a triathlete before she acquired her disability. That's a problem with us in the 50s. We don't think we're in our 50s. We still think we're in our 30s. Age is just a number. <laughs> it's not. Not once you get to this age, I promise you. And Susanna, I think, is uh, going to verify that. But she is going to complete the final 25 metres. And no doubt the crowd will get more and more behind her as she approaches the finish line. Her time is, I suppose, a target inside five minutes for Susanna would be something that she's really looking for. I think one thing we also have to remember is that there are just athletes of so many types of disabilities and there are some disabilities that do get more debilitating on certain days and, and it can be hard to move, let alone swim. Now, Susanna Schnandorf. Right. 
She's going to be out of points. And she is going to get the biggest cheer, I think, since a certain world record was set yesterday. Once she finishes into the final 10 metres or so for Susanna. Epitomising the true spirit of the City Para Swimming World Series. It's not just about winning, it is about doing the best you possibly can, as well as winning. And completing the race, for sure. Just approaching the final part of her race. Just outside five minutes of real hard work there from Susanna Schnandorf. Congratulations to her, but congratulations also to the race winner, uh, Chan Wilam, and an accumulation of 911 points. 938 points, sorry. Kinoshita, 911. 804 for Utsugi. As we have a look at the highlights. Chan Wilan in lane number five. 938 points, Kinoshita in lane four. Happy with that swim. <laughs> so she should be. In the 900s, that's seriously quick. 938 for Chan. We land Kinoshita 9.11, Utsugi 8.04. And for Chinese Taipei, Tung Yi An 7.88. Is that going to be enough to get into the final? Heat four, the final of the four heats. Sophie Soon and Nicole Fu for Singapore. Sophie finally gets to do her pet event, this 100 meters pressure. Sophie in lane three. Nicole Fu, lane eight. Sophie. Nice start, nice dive, and she's up alongside the leaders is Sophie Soon in P3. Nicole Fu trailing just a little bit, and Sophie has just been overtaken by the woman on her inside, Mika Serizawa, who won a gold medal in uh, one of the mixed medleys last night. And that's a, a really powerful second 50 from Serizawa. And Sophie soon will just see Serizawa disappearing in the corner of her left eye. The turn from Serizawa, 37.72, that's quick. Indriani second, Chung in P3. Sophie Soon has dropped down to P4, 41.50. 50 meter split for Sophie. How much energy has she got for this second 50? The second 50 is always more brutal. Your arms are already dying. Coming through in lane four though. Makika Serizawa from Japan. Fastest woman in the pool anyway, a 117 is her target time. She's just going to be outside that 117, but she is going to touch first, Serizawa, an SB14 competitor. That's worth 939 points. Second, Indriani, 845, 802 for Jung. Sophie Soon, 686. Oh, B final definitely, A final perhaps not. A final could be difficult. She might just squeeze in a little. Out in the pool at the moment, we've still got Nicole Fu in lane number eight. And Nicole will be trying to accumulate as many points as she possibly can. Nicole drives through these last couple of meters, which always seem to be a lot more than a couple of meters. And she touches in a time of two minutes. Point four three. Yeah, not happy, Nicole. Not quite her best swim for Sophie. But hopefully she gets a chance to swim in the evening again. Set is our lane number four. Started second best, but by the time they got to the first 50, she had got ahead of Sophie soon. And Sophie went backwards thereafter and will be struggling to make the senior final later on. But no doubts whatsoever that Serizawa will be part of the entertainment tonight in the finals. Here's confirmation. Where is Sophie? P4, 686 points. Time of 128.58. Definitely Serizawa and Indriani and Chung will make the final. Serizawa. Wilam. 
Ung Chuck Yam, Kinoshita, Gabriella Smith, Kanon Fukuda, Indriani, Utsugi. They are the eight finalists for tonight. You needed over 800 points. And even that didn't guarantee you a place in the top eight. That's, that's how, how, how good that, that, that group of swimmers were. That's seriously good. Seven heats in the men's 100 meter breaststroke. And we've got immediately some Singaporean interest. Gareth, Jareth Wong over on the far side. Jareth, he'll be starting in the pool. This is Jareth's uh, first World Paris series. And he's a very new swimmer. So it's really nice to see up and coming swimmers joining the team. Literally in at the deep end. There is Jareth. White swimming cap, easy to signify, easy to pick out. Anthony, Gabriel, Cordero, Alves in lane six, probably one to look out for. Two lengths of the, of the pool, but in lane seven, Kim Soo Hyung from Korea, he's just edging into the lead. And he's taken with him Zulkafli, uh, sorry, um, Molchakin, Stanislav Molchakin from Kazakhstan. In fact, I think Molchakin has just edged himself into a lead as they approach the first 50. Molchakin, that's a very strong second 25 in this first length for the Kazakh. He will indeed touch first. And under the water work, though, the walk under the water work is much better from lane number seven, Kim Soo Hyung, you mentioned that it can make a difference. However, lane number four, Mohamed Ulag is the man who is just edging forward. Just a little bit more explosive in the strokes. You can see he's uh, shooting himself forward. Ulag is under pressure. There's a long stroke of uh, Kim at the near end, but Ulak has done really well. Mohamed Ulak from the Philippines is the man who's taken P1. 479 points. Now then, let's have a, a focus on Jared Wong over on the very, very far side. He's just coming into your view at the very top of your screen. As you say, it's his debut. The race win and the maximum points at the moment, 479, belong to the Philippines under Ulak. You do wonder whether that's going to be enough to propel him into the finals, though. As for Jareth, out of our picture at the moment, as we're watching uh, Wacharapong and Ian Wen Hong. There are a total of seven heats in this event. Over on the far side, touching home for the first time, Jareth Wong just picks up some points. You're in the positive. Always look on the bright side. Touched home in sixth. And it may be enough to get him a sixth place finish in this race. But those points, they count down very, very rapidly. Two Thai athletes are still, they've just completed their first 50. So we need to go up to the other end of the pool to catch up with uh, Nonsong and Sucharon. Nonsong, an SB6 athlete, as is Sucharon. Nonsong in the blue cap. And Sucharon. For five strokes underwater. And a couple out of the water. This is a battle for personal honours. It's almost a Thai national championship in its own right, isn't it? Just between the both of them. I think breaststroke also, it's, it's the kind of uh, event, 100 breaststroke is where you, once you go out too quickly and you have nothing to bring back, it's torture. And I think Nunsong is going through exactly that at the moment. We've seen him go backwards and Sucharin has been able to make up what was a five-meter deficit. 
and he's converted that into a two meter deficit 25 meters of the pool still to, to go at some point you really can't feel your arms anymore and you're just moving them in hopes that you're moving forward waiting patiently in the water are the other competitors competitive courtesy Mohamed Ulag has taken the first heat but only 479 points might not be good enough for the B final because as you say there are seven heats in this uh, men's 100 meter breaststroke and they're only going to get faster Again, the, the cheering, the crowd, the volunteers, supportive right the way through to the end for both these competitors. So Cheron is going to win that little personal battle of Thai pride. Having spectators in the audience really does make a difference, you know. You look up and you see people there supporting you and all the other swimmers makes you feel amazing. Teresa Go with the comments today at the Paris Swimming World Series Singapore brought to you courtesy City. Um, big cheers as the, the wall is touched. Both hands are touched by Tawilap Sucheron. Still 10 meters to go for the remaining competitor. Piteti Chai, uh, Nunsong. He's found this uh, last 50 meters particularly difficult. He's going to be outside of six minutes. I think it, his first 50 meters was inside 230. So a 230 for his first 50 and outside 330 for his second 50. Well done, that man. But there is our heat winner, Mohamed Ulag from the Philippines. Here are the highlights. Ulag in lane number four, got off to a decent start. We were looking out for Jareth um, Wong, but Jareth never really was in contention right from the start. This man, Mohamed Ulag, under a little bit of pressure from Cordero Alves, was able to get there. And uh, Kim Soo Hyung was also impressive as well, indeed. Kim will pick up 464 points in P2. As we wait for the algorithms, just to confirm that first heat result. The athletes for heat number two are already in the water. Three athletes from India in the uh, next heat. Two athletes from Malaysia. There's big screens here at the OCBC Aquatic Centre, so yeah, those guys know that the cameras are on them. One or two shy, one or two not so shy. <laughs> it's a good time to take a picture, quick video, for your five seconds of fame. But you get the camera in the way. I never understand that. You, you, you take a selfie of yourself, but there's a camera in the way, so you can't see yourself. How else will you remember it? <laughs> Ulag, 479 points. Kim Soo Hyung, again competitive for the Korean, 464. Imanshu Nandao from India, 391. And Stanislav Machalkin, 337. Great efforts, disqualification for the two Thai athletes at the end. Exactly, due to them not doing the breaststroke kick. Heat number two. Mzul Kafli from Malaysia, an SB4 competitor, has an entry time of 156.55. Lane number four starting from the water. But it's lane number eight closest yeah, to us, Mohamed Redzwan. 
an SB14 competitor from Malaysia who has got off to a fine start, the yellow cap of Mohamed Redzwan. 18 years of age, Redzwan, a regular competitor on the Paris Swimming World Series. Yet to get himself uh, onto a podium. It'll be a, a real feather in his cap if he were, but a place in the final will be his first objective. He's going to turn inside 38 seconds at 37.62. Over on the far side, you've got uh, Bayou Putra Yuda from Indonesia. The white cap over on the far side, chasing the yellow cap here. Yuda will pick up good points here, an SB9 competitor, Yuda. So Red Swan is going to really have to put some distance between him and Yuda. Red Swan, whose points they count down very, very rapidly. And Red Swan is going to be in the 600, 687, first for now. Good performance over on the far side by Bayou Putra Yuda for 560. So Red Swan now just has to wait. Coming through in lane four, Zul Kafli from Malaysia. Six hundred and thirty-four points, so it's Malaysia one two at the moment. Not the biggest point scoring, but you win your heats and you're certainly in with the chance of making it through to the A final tonight, but a lot of racing still to go on. Finishing in lane six, that's Hua Dan from Vietnam, 205 points for him. And Nam Noi from Thailand will be the last athlete to finish. Coming through Nam Noi. Just looking for positive points, and Nam Noi achieves positive points, 49 for P6 in the points category. But a good day at the office or a good day at the pool for Malaysia, Teresa? And, yeah, I mean, it's 600 is respectable, you know, you earn yourself a, a good chance of trying to make the finals, at least the B finals. Best another of, chance to swim, leave me. Best of the highlights, we're looking at lane number two. At, uh, Yudabai Putra, but the man in the yellow cap, Mohamed Redzwan, he would touch the wall first and 687 points, and that's a look of quiet satisfaction there. And the satisfaction is because... Well, he scored 687 points, so Capri 634. Oh, what's happened? Disqualification for Redzwan. A DQ for Redzwan. So the look of satisfaction will be quickly taken from him. And Zulkafli will get the fastest um, time. I need some clarification on that, Teresa. Did you see anything? I uh, nothing that I saw, but I think later when we might hear them announce the reasons for disqualification. Heat three. Men's 100 breaststroke. Breaststroke is one of the easiest strokes to disqualify on, just because there are so many technical parts of it. If you forget to touch with both hands, that's a disqualification right there. Ego Tanaka in action for the second time this morning. A no-show in lane number six, where uh, Ron Jing Song is an absentee. Korea's Lim Hyuk Soo in lane number four, an SB14 athlete. He will be expected to win this at a canter, but whether or not he accumulates enough points to make it through to the finals, we'll just have to wait and see. Hyuk Soo, indeed, is 
He's the man who gets off to the fastest start and breaks through 50 metres just outside 15 seconds, 16.02. So it's going to be about a 32, 33 second first 50. Behind him, a good swim in lane number one from Edwin Villanueva from the Philippines. He's uh, in P2 at the moment. Villanueva is an SP7 athlete. Let's just have a look at the split time. He's lost a little bit of time, 38.20 for Lim Hyuk Su. Let's see how much energy he's used. Turning in P2 over on the far side. We've got Edwin Villanueva from the Philippines. 24-year-old athlete has turned in 48.81 in P3 with Miguel Narvaez. Good stroke though. And coming through, Lim Hyok Su was expected to win this heat. And that's exactly what is happening. And Lim Hyok Su is about to touch the wall. And Lim Hyok Su touches the wall in 124.03, 538 points. Right, that might not be good enough for a place in the final. Over on the far side, struggling is Edwin Villanueva. And Villanueva, he's going to be in the 400s. But in lane number seven, potential new leader. 692 points, a new P1 for Miguel Angel Narvaez from Colombia. And indeed, Narvaez will be the fastest in this particular heat. Teresa was listening intently as that uh, heat was going on to the reasons for the disqualification in the previous uh, heat for Malaysia's Mohamed Redzwan. If I heard it correctly, I think Redzwan perhaps didn't touch with both hands or had his uh, hands separated, not simultaneously touched. You did warn. You did warn of that in the previous heat. But it sometimes, you know, you just forget. <laughs> Here, the man in the white cap was always going to win this one, Lim Hyok Su. But in the end, his uh, 538 points, although he's touched first, means that he's only second in terms of the overall standings because Miguel Narvaez from Colombia has accumulated uh, 692 points and got Colombia another place in another final. Very strong Colombian team here in Singapore. There is a really strong uh, Colombian swimmer coming up in the next heat too. So Narvaez confirmed, 692. Lim will have to wait. I wouldn't imagine anyone in the 300s will be able to make the A final later on tonight. Heat number four. Singaporean interest in lane two. Lim Kong Boon. In lane 8, we have uh, Colombian swimmer Moises, long-time competitor, 1974. He's also a Paralympic medalist for the 100 meters breaststroke for his event. Still under 50, still a youngster. Can imagine some high points hopefully coming from him today. Ethan Koo in lane number 1, alongside uh, Lim. Ethan Koo, long time underwater. When he emerges, he's uh, alongside an already bobbing uh, Lim Kong Boom. That's a good start from Lim Kong Boom. But in lane four, it's Roman Potapov from Kazakhstan, who has uh, got a nice long stroke. And Potapov, it is, who will lead after the first 50. And already, this looks like it's going to be a much faster heat than heat three. Will turn in 37.3. Shin Wei Lin, followed by Nimeta Noi. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, disqualification announcement for event number 17, heat 2. Pop -pop, pop -pop pop number 8 is still coming through. The rule number 11.4.5. So, Pop -pop is under pressure from Shea Win Lin. Potapov, an SP12 competitor, over on the far side, Ethan Koo. 
is dragging Lim Kong Boon alongside him. This is presentable for Lim Kong Boon. He's just in your screen to the very top in the white cap. Lane three for him. But let's see the points for Potapov. Potapov touches now 584 points for him. Still holds the lead. Still holds the lead, Potapov. As for Lim Kong Boon, he will be touching now 313 points for Lim Kong Boon, a time of 133.08. And two athletes still in the water. That uh, Yang Jurong finishes 147. And uh, Li Jin Cheng for China finishes in a time of 150.11. Well, Moises Garcia, you did say to look out for Moises, and he did accumulate the most points. He finished eighth in a time of 138.03, but 896 points. See, there's life in the 40s. There's still lots of fire in there. <laughs> Certainly is. Moises is, uh, I, I, I mean, I've known him since I was competing, and he's always been a really strong competitor. Really came true um, in the last couple of Paralympic Games. Finally got his medal that he was dying so hard for. Well, Moises Garcia, you can see him right at the very bottom. Gets into his, his stroke very late, obviously, because of the shallow dive. As we focus, obviously, on the guys who are leading the way. Potapov it was who touched first, but he didn't set enough of a target, Potapov. And it would be Colombia once again who come through and take this heat. And but probably a place in the final. Definitely a place in definitely. the final. Definitely. Lots of disqualifications in this 100 meters breaststroke. I think uh, the referees are being really strict, but also it is easier, I think, to get disqualified in the breaststroke events. Yang, Yang Jirong, the latest. That's three DQs already in this 100 meter breaststroke. This is heat number five. And for Singapore, Colin Soon in lane number three. And uh, on to wait in lane number six. Look out for Nelson Corzo in lane number seven. Double bronze medalist in the finals that took place last night. One hundred meter breaststroke heats heat number five for men. A late break coming from lane number four. Muzabekov from Uzbekistan. Now then, Colin Soon is alongside Muzabekov, and Colin Soon is currently in P2. Muzabekov in the, the black cap, Colin Soon just alongside him with the Singapore flag on the left-hand side. It'll be Muzabekov who turns first. Colin Soon has gone trying to go with him stroke for stroke. 31.84, 33.84 for Colin Soon. Still a respectable time. I think he might try and catch up a little bit here on the second 50. SB 13 swimmer Colin Soon, as is Muzabekov ahead of him. Colin, though, is struggling. Muzabekov has increased his stroke rate and has uh, gained a couple more meters over Colin Soon, who's in P2. So we look at the, the timing first, and then we look at the points. But Muzabekov, this is quick for Muzabekov. Really Muzabekov. strong, really powerful strokes. And Muzabekov, 901 points. Colin Soon will touch second. He'll pick up 755, Colin Soon. A time of 113.17. 980 points for Nelson Corzo in lane number seven. Colombia strike again. And 624 points for Wang Ziwei in lane number six. So very presentable from Singapore swimmers, but this is international competition, Teresa. It's, it's good. I think uh, we, you know, we, we see a lot of young swimmers coming up and we, we just can only imagine how much better they're going to become in the coming years. So look out for Corzo in lane number seven. 
He wouldn't be the quickest. There's uh, Colin Soon just turning now in second place. Muzabekov doing pretty well, Muzabekov. Uh, and 901 points for him. If you score 900 and you still don't get the win in points, that's a, that's a tough day in the pool. That's when you know the, the field is tough. <laughs> Go all out is the message. And they certainly are. Leave it all in the pool. And we're just waiting final confirmation. Judges have to ratify everything. Nelson Corzo. Ooh, Ameri America's record? I think so. 118.90, 980 points. Anything close to a thousand is world record or is record time. Was a back of 901 points. Colin soon, fourth place, 755. Heat number six again. Singaporean interest. Darren Champ, lane a zero. Also a chance to see Carlos Zarate in lane number five. Double gold medalist yesterday. And Abdul Halim from Malaysia in lane number eight. Some fast swimmers out there. Darren Chan is in some pretty august company. He six to the men's 100 breaststroke. Long time under the water, lane number four. Zumagali and Zumagali had a long time under the water, made good use of it. He is the man who is leading it the way, but do keep an eye out for Carlos Zarate in the lane next to him because Zarate is an SP7 athlete and he is not being dropped at all. I think a, a great indication is just how, how, how much lower he is in classification compared to the others but he is not being left behind too far. Zarate actually turns in P8 to 36.50. That is quicker than some of the S14 athletes in previous heats for Zarate in lane number seven. Focus, though, will be on the man who is leading the way, Zumagali from Kazakhstan. He's an SP13 swimmer. Nice long stroke, looking good. He'll pick up some significant points here. This is very quick. Indeed, he's going to just be in that Low 900s and 9.49, first place for him. But let's look in the lane alongside him. Zarate, keep a very close look for Zarate. Lane alongside him, Zarate will pick up. 959 points. Colombia do it again. Colombia's having a good one. Over on the far side, Darren Chan. Again, a presentable performance from Singapore. 619 points, a 121.11 for Darren Champ. Might be competitive in Asia, but when you've got the likes of Zarate and the rest of the Colombian team, 959 points for Zarate. That's a, that's a world champ uh, performance right there. Here's the highlights. We have a little look at uh, Darren alongside Zumagali. We went over the line first, and that's a very fast time. 105.57 for 100 breaststroke. He accumulates 949 points, but it's not good enough to get the better of Zarate. As, the, as this will show. Darren Chan, 619 points, only good enough for PA. That is highly competitive. Zarate showing 118, but it's not even close to the seat time. Just shows the excitement that tonight can bring. Yeah, he can get better. Heat 7, the final heat of this morning's racing. Singapore represented by uh, Han Liang Chow. Malaysia from Adib Iqbal Abdullah in lane 5. And also Brian Lau in lane 2. Turquoise chunks. Long swim under the water. Lane four. Yamaguchi. Nahide Yamaguchi from Japan. Adib 
alongside him from Malaysia and Brian Lau, so it's Japan, Malaysia, Malaysia. Hong Guang, have a look at Jia Hong Guang, lane number zero. He's just out of your shot now, but an SB6 swimmer is uh, really competing in this first 50. Our focus on Yamaguchi, whose split time was 31-34. Again, this is a quick heat, the seventh out of seven heats. Yamaguchi has taken Adib Iqbal with him. Behind them, Brian Lau is under pressure for P3. Brian Lau, an SP14 swimmer, but it's going to be Yamaguchi who touches first. And again, this is going to be a 900s, high 900s, 974 for Yamaguchi. That set a target, 873 for Iqbal. Brian Lau, 776. Highly respectable. Now then, lane number zero. Have a look at Hong Guang. Let's see what Hong Guang is able to do. His time for Hong Guang when he touches now a 131.19. 729 points for Zhang Hong Guang. P6 for him. Gosh, that's competitive. You're going to see a lot of 900 pointers in the finals. And they'll push each other to towards uh, regional or even potentially world records. Hopefully. Looking forward to see more and more world records smashed in the pool these couple of days. Now, turning first there was uh, Neohide Yamaguchi, 23 old from Japan, S14 swimmer. Did really well and really pushed. Time of 107.05, 974 points for him. That's certainly a place in the final. Avdi Dipek Iqbal, 8.73. Brian Lau, high 700s, might not make it through to the top eight. Cho Han finishing in last place in the end. And here are the eight finalists. Kozo with an American Games record. Yamaguchi, Zorate, Zumagali, Muzabekov, Garcia. So three Colombians in the final. Adib Iqbal and Josh Wilmer from New Zealand completing the top eight. Brian Lau from Malaysia just edged out. Okay, so there is our action. Ten Singaporean swimmers in action. We've got Colombia, though, once again dominating in the pool. Teresa Go, a fascinating day two heat. Uh, what are we expecting for tonight's finals? I think uh, we've seen some amazing races in the heats today, and it can only get better in the evening. Of course, it can only get better. We had a world record last night, and we're going to get a world record tonight. Join us again from 5.25 on whichever channel you are watching this. This is the City Para Swimming World Series from Singapore. We are on day two. We'll see you at 5.25 tonight. See ya.